Reggae music crawls into your bloodstream like some vampire amoeba from the psychic rapids of Upper Niger consciousness. I said, I don't know what that means, but I gotta find it. I went out that night and bought a used copy in Berkeley of Catch a Fire. Saw The Harder They Come the next night. Bought the soundtrack on the way home. My life changed forever. This is the heart of the archive. This is the Bob Marley cabinet. And these are unreleased tapes of live shows, interviews, outtakes, demos, rehearsals. Uh, the dream concert with Stevie Wonder in 75. The announcement of the assassination attempt and the Smile Jamaica concert two nights later. And uh, these are five of the seven Apollo shows. Gabon, both nights in Zimbabwe, the night of the riot, and then the full concert the following night. Uh, biggest show of his life, Milan. 110,000 people came to see him in a stadium where the Pope had appeared the week before and Bob Marley outdrew the Pope in Italy. These are the last five shows of his life, the announcement of his death, the funeral, the tribute shows from around the world, and then the Whalers Band continuing on, and interviews with various people involved in his life. And this is Bunny, and these are the 64 hours of interviews for Bunny's autobiography that Leroy Jody Pearson and I did in 1990. He's refused to publish his book. And down on the floor, there's a wooden box with 1800 pages of transcripts and this is the whole story this is everything the whalers ever did this is his story of moving in with bob when he was eight years of age right through blackheart man in 75 almost day by day so this is the peter tosh drawer i i'd get a call three or four times a year from different parts of the world from him to overnight him stuff that he was looking for just before he was killed he called me because no nuclear war had just come out he was working on the next album already and I'm pretty sure the song I sent, because I didn't pay much attention, it was just another call from Peter looking for a piece of music, but um, I think it was Here Comes the Judge that he wanted to re-release, re re-record. Re this is the Reggae Library. This is all reggae print in here. These are reggae magazines, all arranged alphabetically and then chronologically within each title. This is a big section of Japanese reggae magazines here. And in November of 67, as I was leaving for Vietnam, I bought the very first issue of Rolling Stone in Berkeley and subscribed immediately, so I have a full 42-year run of Rolling Stone. Probably missing about 10 issues out of the whole run. And these are part of 110 cubic feet. And that's about 120 cubic feet now of clippings. And to wrap your head around that, think of a foot square box, a foot high, and a line of them from home plate to first base, and then another 30 feet beyond. And that's clippings. And there's big boxes of Bunny, Peter, Ziggy, these are five boxes of clippings about the Life of Bob Marley show that I do. These are from all over the world. Top shelf is all Bob Marley CDs, and this is a series of ultimately 15 discs that the Frenchman Bruno Bloom and I produced to bridge the Coxon and the Island eras from 67 to 72. First time available to the public, things like Slassy as the Chapel and Tredo and all kinds of rare singles. This is reggae. This is the Whaler's shelf, minus about 250 sleeves. This is Bunny. This is Peter. Bob starts here and goes to here, minus 144 sleeves. This is Ziggy. These are the I-3. And then this is stuff that I wrote liner notes for, or took the cover pictures of, or produced. But basically, these are my liner notes. Next shelf is reggae, below it is reggae, and the second half is African. Bottom shelf is pop, going back to my first record in 1954, a 78 of Shaboom. So, these are Bob's first records. 
for Leslie Kahn, called him Robert Marley, but he was always changing people's names. He changed James Chambers into Jimmy Cliff, and on Bob's second record for him, he called him Bobby Martell. And there's Blackwell releasing Bob's first records in England in 1973. This is Love Won't Be Mine, and signed by Beverly Kelso from the original Whalers, who's on here. Roland Alfonso and Lloyd Nibbs from the Scatolites who played on it, Coxon who produced it, and Peter and Bunny. This is Lemon Tree. There's only about five known copies. They paid $600 for that. This is really cool. This is signed by all three women who sang with the original Whalers, Beverly Kelso, Joe Higgs' wife, who sings on Lonesome Feeling, and uh, Cherry Green. And it's green vinyl. Here's Bob as a spiritual singer. <laughs> the freedom singers singing a spiritual called Let the Lord Be Seen in You on Coxon's spiritual label. That is Bob. And this is really cool, because they couldn't get their harmonies together on this one, so they had to call Joe Higgs in to bail him out. And he sings on it with his wife, Sylvia Richards. Peter and Bunny, Coxon, Roland Al, and Lloyd Nibbs on the back. So, you know, people are always asking me what my records are worth, and I, I don't know, how, how do you put a value on these things? They're irreplaceable. They're not priceless, but they're irreplaceable. So, English Island, Studio One, Wayland Solem, Upsetter, Tough Gong, and Tough Gong. And this is Bunny, and that's Peter. 99% uh, of everything Bob Marley ever released I have in those drawers. And this is Lee Perry's board tape of Who Cult the Game and Rasta Man Live Up. And on the back he wrote X Rasta. Push Bob's elbow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You had a good push. It's the reggae decompression chamber. Come on in. Oh, there's at least 3,000 buttons in the archives. And uh, these come from all over the world. That's really the folk art of the movement, isn't it? This was bootlegged on the streets of Kingston. I was so proud. It's a picture I took of Bob and Family Man in 79 in San Diego. Some guy was bootlegging him in downtown Kingston. And this is my favorite picture of Bob. Bruce Talman and I met when we were traveling with Bob in 79. He was an African-American photographer who took the first cover picture Bob ever had on a black magazine in America, and that wasn't until 78. And Bob took him to Gabon with him in January of 80, and he's walking along the beach one morning, and this <clears throat> young fellow comes up to him and says, what's this Rasta stuff? What do you mean coming to Africa telling us about Africa? And just as Bob's turned to answer, Bruce took that picture. I just, I love the humanity of it. And I love this picture, too. This was taken by Tony Bernard for the L.A. Times in 1973, when Joe Higgs had replaced Bunny briefly in the group before Peter left. And it's Bob, Joe Higgs, Fams, Carly, Peter, and Wyatt. Isn't that a great shot? And there's Chris Blackwell as a vampire by scratch, and I asked him what he meant when he signed it, Brack, and he said, Bracula. <laughs> <laughs> 